different day, same excuses, another rejection. I've gotten so used to them now that I don't feel anything other than passing disappointment. After all, who would harm me? I know I wouldn't. My level of education is minimal to say the least. I have no professional qualifications, and I have a back that rules me out of most physical labor. But it's not quite bad enough to get me on the list for a disability pension. I guess you could say I've had it bad over the years. It all started about three years ago. The economy took a turn for the worse. And a lot of businesses started to close down because of it. I always thought it would never affect me. Maybe I was naive, I don't know. Inevitably, the factory did close down, and I was left without any source of income. The assembly line was all I'd ever known since I was 16 years old. And it was a job that had passed down from my father's generation, and from his father's before him. They had lived and died beneath the roof of that factory. And now it was gone for good. It was like losing a part of myself. Things only got worse from there. Because I lost my job, we were then relying on my wife, the only source of income. But that all changed when she became ill one day. We arranged to have an appointment with a doctor, to have her checked out, and the results turned both our lives upside down. She had breast cancer. It was another one of those things you don't think will ever affect you until it actually happens. There was nothing the doctors could do for her. She died soon after she was diagnosed. Nothing can prepare you for a shock like that. No matter what they say. It's people who try to study emotions like it's some sort of exact science. They don't know what it's like to have to bury a loved one. To have to hold their hand as their last breath escapes them. To have the one person you cared about most snatched away before their time, and yet to see the world around you carry on as if nothing ever happened. My son took it especially bad. He didn't want to talk about it. it seemed to push me away, as if he somehow thought it was my fault for not protecting her. In the end, we grew apart and lost contact. Last I heard, He'd quit college. Some people seem to get all the luck in life. I wouldn't give her a decent job and a car to get to wear a suit, not to have to scrabble around in the dirt for every penny I can get. But I guess life is designed that way. Some people do well and get rich. Then there are people like me, guys who didn't do so well, who spend their whole lives on their hands and knees working for the tax men. And then they die, and life goes on. Nobody notices people like us. No one will ever ask us for our autograph. And when we die, no one will remember us. It will be as if we never even existed. Nobody cares that my next job might be the difference between me keeping my home and living out in the streets. I guess all they care about is money. It's how all businesses work these days. They can't afford someone like me on their payroll. I had to sell the house after my wife died. The house that was passed down to me by my father. I couldn't afford to keep it. Especially with the rent going up each year, and me still without a permanent income. The house, along with all its memories, went to the tax man. I bought a new, smaller place, way out of town. I had hoped it would help me forget the painful memories and start over. But it only served to isolate me further from the few people who cared about me. I began to lose touch with all my friends, and eventually stopped seeing them all together. They became little more than distant memories. As far as work was concerned, it came and went. It 
times I would find myself busy enough to forget about my worries, but other times when things were slow, I had only my thoughts to keep me company. With each spell like this, I became more and more withdrawn. I was a different man from the one I was a year before. I lacked concentration and dedication to work, and it was that that was ultimately blamed for my lack of work these days. My back was damaged for good. There was nothing I could do to fix it. I couldn't work, and the government refused to pay me a disability pension on the grounds that I was able-bodied enough to earn money through other forms of employment. Forms of employment that just didn't exist with the economy the way it was. Forms of employment that still don't exist. And so I find myself in this mess. A few months ago, I started to drink heavily as a way of keeping my thoughts at bay. People might say I'm an alcoholic, but that's the only way I'm able to stay sane these days. But it only adds to my problems in the long run. The drink costs money, and money is something I just don't have to spare. In the end, it's just one vicious cycle. I keep the same routine each day because it keeps me active. I know there's nothing out there for me, but the second I stop trying, I know I won't have the strength to get it back up again. Routine is all I've ever known. Part of it is a fear of the unknown, I guess. What would happen if I were to suddenly decide to give up, or if I were suddenly to decide, I don't know, try a different path. I know it's too late for me to learn a new trade. Besides, I have no time to get sidetracked. I need to earn money when I can get it. It's like I said, the world doesn't have time for guys like me. We live our whole lives under the thumb of the tax man, giving everything we have for a right to survive. And when we die, no one will remember us. Walking down a dusty road, the sunshine on my back Whatever life may throw at me, I try to stay on track Sometimes luck she turns against me, but what's a man to do? Gotta keep on till the end, I only got one life, not two I can't get sad about the sorrows of my past I gotta take the good times while they last I used to be a lazy man, I wouldn't stray from what I knew Too sad in no beliefs to see all of the things that I could do But then the answer came in finding pleasure in each day My life is far from fixed, but it's a brighter shade of grey